focus our energy on the negative, but we will focus on the positive of a thing. Tell you next, I gotta change my thinking. Because see, the world trains us to look at the negative, but God wants to train us to look at the positive that through our mouth, through our admirations, through our affirmations and the word of God, we can bring about change everywhere we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He begins to talk to them and he says, look, I'm not going to waste my energy mm-hmm. on anything but this. Yeah. I'm focusing on this one thing. I fix my mind to forget the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whew. It is a hard thing to try to train people to forget the past. Have you ever been in the future and somebody already said they forgave you and you you already said you're moving on? And then before you know it, they go and pull something from your past. Y'all gotta help me to, to, to make you stumble or to make you mad. And then you begin to think, well, didn't you say you were over that? Didn't you say you, you were sorry? Didn't you say we were moving forward? Y'all gotta help me. You've been in a relationship and you start reaching for the stuff in the past because you need something to be able to hit below the belt, but with God, he says, I don't want you to look at the past anymore. I don't want to look at where you've been. I don't want you to look at who hurt you. I don't want you to look at who broke you. I don't want you to look at who left you, but you've got to focus on this one thing, forgetting. Somebody say, God, take it away from my memory. Because it's becoming a hindrance. He says, I'm forgetting the past and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. So you got to get a revelation and a glimpse. Paul understood that he is now working for God. He is on God's side and that he is now to set his affections on things that are above. Uh, if we, when we look at it now with revelation now, God, we must set our face. We must set our mind and our focus about what God promised us, how he would bring us out, how he would deliver us, how he would expand us, how he would develop us, how he would move on our behalf. And when we begin to see ourselves, how how God sees us, then we'll begin not to be bothered by the outside distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on what lies ahead. Yeah. Verse 14 in the Living Translation, he uses a word powerful. He says, I strain to reach. Uh-huh. Which means it's not going to be easy to obtain. It's not going to be natural. It's not going to come to me overnight. And so I begin to say, Lord, what are you trying to say? He says, tell them that the enemy likes to sidetrack us from the express train that God wants to bless us mm. because we're on a mission for him. All right. And uh, many of us cannot focus because we allow uh, the enemy to sidetrack us. Right. And somebody said, well, how does he sidetrack us? Some things will come up in the pathway to distract us or to attract our attention to occupy us to take our strength and our thought. So you're moving in the direction that God has for you. You're focused on what God says for you. And then on the path, here comes a distraction. Here comes something to make you break or lose focus, to make you lose your attention off of what God said, what he said he would do for you, what he's trying to prove to you, how he's trying to move you, but tell your neighbor, you get sidetracked. You get sidetracked by someone who comes. Look, sometimes, look at this. Oh, God, this thing bless me. When we get sidetracked, somebody said, preach to me, preacher. Most of the time, it comes through irritation. That's a feeling of annoying that calls you to be impatient. So what the enemy will try to do is when you're moving in your purpose, he will now try to surround you with things and people who begin to irritate you, who begin to annoy you. Y'all don't want to talk to them. Who begin to kind of crawl under your skin because they begin to say things necessarily that you don't believe or they begin to counteract against that which God has told you. Have you ever been in the presence of somebody who just irritated you? They irritated you because they didn't have faith. They irritated you because they tried to shove the Bible down your throat but they weren't using it for themselves. They irritate you because they're not even walking what they need to be walking but they're hypocritical to what's going on and so they begin to distract you from what God said that you're now focused on their walk, how they think, what they're not doing. It comes to take your focus. Somebody say, I will not be irritated in this season. You can be set up by a co-worker to be irritated. They'll look for faults. They'll look to set you up. They'll look to sabotage you. They'll look to undermine you. But you got to be focused, not get distracted, not come out of character. Tell your neighbor, I will not be irritated in 
in this season. I must move forward. Oh, y'all ain't saying it. Tell your neighbor, I won't be irritated. I won't be irritated. I must move forward. Yes. Things come uh -huh. to irritate you. Yeah. Woo. The next thing that comes is not only irritation, but it comes petty grievances. Could not oh, oh, Excessive oh, concern geez. deliberately mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. important matters. Wow. Mm -hmm. We stop to pursue or to adjust. Right. Wait a minute. Come right. on now. So now we're not just dealing with irritation. We start dealing with petty grievances. Yeah. We begin to see something or someone brings something to us Woo. to distract our mind that we spend more focus on the pettiness of the situation. Yeah. Some things are not even worth our time or our energy. Right. Have, you, have you ever been caught up in petty and you were, you know, you keep got going over the situation and they shouldn't have did this to me and they hurt me like this yeah. and I didn't understand this and then you go for a breath and eat your food and you come back the next hour and you gotta still discuss petty. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And so after a while, you become obsessed with what happened with you. Obsessed with that person. And you begin to look for every flaw or every type of distraction you can find with them. So when you wake up thinking about them, you go to sleep thinking about them. You get in your car thinking about them. You can't even think about God because you didn't let petty get you. High five your neighbor said, don't let petty get you. Don't let what people say don't let what people do. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me this afternoon. I need you to open up your mouth and say, Petty got me before, but I'm not going to let Petty get me anymore. You get Petty, they didn't speak to me. You get Petty, they didn't tell me happy birthday. You get Petty, they didn't click on my Facebook post. You cannot allow pettiness to distract you from what I'm done, baby. The 